What is the language of metrics? Metrics are things that make you see that items are unique. They identify two major things, performance and value, All right? And the numbers that describe the scope of what's going to happen in, in, in a unique project are metrics. And these are numbers that identify performance, which means they have something to do with time and cost deviation and customer satisfaction. This is when we have performance metrics, right? And the numbers that identify difference between competitive vendors are metrics. So if we're using metrics, it better do one of these things. If it's not, we're actually wasting our time. So there are a lot of people who have a lot of numbers and a lot of data, but they have no metrics. And they keep struggling with, well, what's the metric? What's he talk about metrics? Well, let's go back to a dominant chart. Now, this may not be as big on your screen, but you have the cheat sheet that shows you this. This should be like etched in our brains. Industry structure. If you go to the price-based or client-centric environment, you have very few metrics. People say, well, what do you mean we have very few metrics? Well, remember what the definition of metrics are. The first thing we understand when we're in the traditional area is the system can't tell the difference. So every vendor is looked at being the same. So how can you have metrics? Well, somebody said, well, we got all these numbers. We pre-qualify, we do this, we do that, but it's not metrics. Therefore, whenever they have numbers there, they're always, quote, a minimum number and the vendors always turn it into a maximum number. And that's why we have bureaucracy. And that's why there's no value in doing this. Now, when I say no value, I don't really mean totally no value. I mean, the numbers don't have, quote, they don't drive what the, the action we want out of the vendors. Now, when we go to the best value, now we have metrics. And metrics say that every entity is unique. All the vendors are trying to perform to their maximum. And they're trying to show their value, which makes them accountable. That is why this chart has high performance at the top. People are going, What's he saying? High performance at the top. That's what it means. It, be, it means because the vendors are actually trying to perform. People go, well, we ran best value and the vendors weren't performing. Well, that's because they didn't do it right. All right. The, the, the famous saying that I always remember, right, from, from my religious background is, if somebody gives you who, who really knows all things, right? Knows that you need bread. He's not going to give you a stone. And people, what? Well, that's just a religious thing. When we give our kids bread, we know they have to eat. We know they, we feed them because they're hungry. We're not going to give them a stone. That's how simple this is. If we're running true best value, we better have what? Metrics. And whoever is going to have the competitive advantage in this area, they're going to understand 
what the metrics are. But because people move from the lower quadrant to the higher quadrant, does that mean now that they understand? The answer is no. So half the people who are competing still think that the client's trying to give them a stone. And that is why the structure of best value is set up the way it's set up. Because the ones who think that the client is giving them a stone, they just shouldn't be competitive. All right. Therefore, in this system of best value, it's more transparent to the experts. Do we have to offer any enticements? What's the answer? No. So now in Europe, they use an award system that says, well, if we rate you highly in these areas, you get a like competitive advantage because we give you more points. So even though your price is high, if we think, if we think, if we think you're good, we're going to give you more what? More points. What? So the high price actually gets an advantage if the client or the raters think that they're bringing more value. Okay, this doesn't make sense, right? And this is, they don't understand what metrics are. Now, I have to, I have to agree with them. Uh, they started doing this and, and the guy who initially bought off on this was guess who? Now, why would I buy into an idea like this? Because evidently I was so happy that they're doing best value that I took any of their ideas and go, oh, that's fine. <laughs> In actuality. So this was all an evolution. No, metrics are actually required. And the metrics, if they don't show uniqueness, performance, value, and accountability, they're not actually metrics, they're just numbers and data. Hopefully everybody understands that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more content. If you have any questions about the best value approach or for Dr. Dean, leave them in the comment section below and we'll get to them in a later video. Thanks, we'll see you next time.